Ladies and gentlemen, if I could have your attention, please. I just ask you to please find your seats and settle. We're set to get underway momentarily. Thank you. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, if I could ask you to settle, we're going to get underway. Thank you. <clears throat> oh, ab absolutely, gentlemen. Yeah. Ooh, excuse us, old guys. Oh. Sorry, guys. Oh, listen, all good, all good. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Darren Dunn, and I'm the Chief Executive Officer here at Assiniboia Downs. On behalf of my fellow Senior Executive, Sharon Gullius, our management team, and our Board of Directors, we are very pleased that you could join us today for the tradition of the official draw for post positions for the 68th running of the Manitoba Derby, sponsored by Manitoba Liquor and Lotteries. I hope you took a moment or will take a moment and have a look at the archival display Assiniboia Downs historian Bob Gates has available just outside of the dining room. There are some amazing, amazing pictures and amazing stories attached to our historical winners of this annual feature race of the season and Bob would be more than happy to elaborate on or answer any questions that you might have. I'm also very proud to point out uh, through, again, the tireless efforts of our historian, Bob Gates, we also have on loan and through donation an incredible archival display of memorabilia connected to the history of racing at Assiniboia Downs. It's available today and through this weekend only. It's in our history area in the main lobby at the front entrance. It's entitled Assiniboia Downs Remembers, and it truly is a wonderful and very unique display. Ladies and gentlemen, inside your program cover, of your press kit on the inside page and at the back you will see two very distinguished local horses both winners of the Manitoba Derby and both owned by the late Philip Kivis as many are aware we recognize the loss of our friend and significant industry asset at our opening press conference and while it's always important to move forward and to move on it is equally as important to remember Considering that Philip Kivas had bought a horse earlier this year specifically to try and win the Manitoba Derby once again and the fact that the horse actually deservedly made it to the point of entering the Derby on Monday, that's amazing. We felt it important to recognize the true previous winners that he had in our press kit and with the winner's circle photo of Plenty Chili and Northern Prospector as they go for the hat trick on Monday afternoon. As we always like to remind you each year at this event, though, uh, this one is not about speeches. This one belongs to the horses and our special guests involved with them, the owners, the trainers and their staff who work so hard to reach this pinnacle opportunity, the jockeys who are carrying and shouldering live all of the pressure while we watch, and very importantly, as I mentioned, the owners who have put their money where their mouth is and created the opportunity for themselves. So congratulations in advance to all. We look forward to a very safe and very exciting race, and of course, may the best horse win. We do have a few special guests on hand today. We truly appreciate their support. To say a few words at this time, we'd like to now call on the Honorable Ron Schuler, Minister of Crown Services for the Province of Manitoba. Well, I was given 25 minutes to bring greetings, but I don't think I'll use that much. Um, I, I do want to let you know we're here today uh, as your government, as friends. I've been here for a lot of years as an opposition member, and today I get to be here representing our government. So I'll keep it short, but I want you to know that we're really excited to be here. We support who you are and what you do and what you bring to this province. So this is the first time I get to do what I'm gonna do next in front of you, and that is on behalf of our new Premier, uh, Premier Brian Pallister, it brings me great pleasure to bring greetings to you and to thank you for what you do and for the efforts you put into our province to make this a better place, to make an exciting place. I know I'm going to be here again on Monday and my 19-year-old, who's not really that engaged in, in a lot of things, uh, said to me, by the way, I'm bringing five bucks and I'm gonna bet on a horse. And I said, good for you. 
Good for you. So I, I do want to say that I'm very pleased that John Stinson is here, um, our CEO from Liquor and Lotteries and, and others of his management team. Uh, we're proud supporters of this event. We're very happy to be here. Continue to do what you're doing. Uh, let, let's keep um, this industry going. Let's keep people coming to Winnipeg and to Manitoba. It is events like this and, and others throughout the province that make this a great place to live, a great place to play. And Darren, thank you very much to you and the Jockey Club and everybody involved for putting this on and for helping to make Manitoba a better place. So thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the day. And now I'd like to call on Dr. Dougie Olson, Member of Parliament for Charleswood, St. James, Assiniboia, and Headingley. Well, thank you very much. Um, on behalf of the Government of Canada, I would like to thank the, I would like to congratulate the organizers and the participants of the 68th Manitoba Derby. Uh, the Manitoba Derby is important to the history of horse racing, not just to Manitobans, but uh, to horse racing on a national scale. Um, from its beginnings at the Manitoba Stakes in 1930 at Polo Park, um, which wasn't always a shopping mall, um, the event was of national importance at that time. Uh, there was no Canadian Derby at that time, uh, so the organizers took the reins, so to speak. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> so have it designated the, uh, the Canadian Derby. Uh, the Canadian Derby is no longer run here. Uh, you're welcome, Edmonton. Uh, but here in Manitoba, we're proud to hold the event that created it. Um, since its construction in 1956, Assiniboia Downs has served as a key cultural influence and economic driver of this community. As a sports venue, a concert venue, uh, everyone remember the Eagles concert? <laughs> yeah. and, or as an event space and a place to meet friends, um, Assiniboia Downs is still a major attraction for people in Manitoba and beyond. Uh, I've lived here almost my entire life, and no matter how far or how often I travel, uh, the sight of the grandstand from the plane is a comforting reminder that I'm coming home. To the staff of Cinnaboy Downs and all those participating uh, in the Manitoba Derby, I say thank you for all your hard work and dedication to this remarkable piece of Manitoba culture and history. Have a great race. Thank you, Doug. The Eagles, Steve Miller, uh, back in the 70s there, and I mean, we could really list a number in that, and uh, maybe even topically we could say uh, very proud to have hosted uh, two uh, roadside attraction festivals, uh, and with the challenges going on with the, the lead singer of the Tragically Hip, we were thrilled uh, to have them as part of our history on two occasions out here for uh, a couple of massive events as well. Today as well, ladies and gentlemen, also very important, we want to recognize the annual support we receive in the form of a total of $3,000 worth of scholarships available to qualified candidates in the horse racing industry. That support comes from CIBC and BDO, and I'd like to thank and recognize Mr. Ernie Knobloch and Max Tapley joining us today from CIBC, and Mr. Mark Brevard joining us today from BDO. Thank you very much. And finally, as uh, thoughtfully acknowledged through Honourable uh, Minister Schuler, again recognize and thank the support of Manitoba Liquor and Lotteries, again represented today by CEO John Stinson and uh, members of his team. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are here to talk about the Manitoba Derby on Monday, but as many of you know, uh, we also race on Saturday night, we race on Sunday night. Uh, with a parade to post at 7.15 both days, all part of our Festival of Racing Weekend, which is brought to you again with sponsor support from our friends at Manitoba Liquor and Lotteries. The Festival Weekend will feature a total of four premier stake races that in addition to the Manitoba Derby on Monday, will also include the Manitoba Mile on Sunday night, Saturday night rather. The top horse, horses on the grounds will go to post in that event. The graduation stakes for our two-year-old future stars goes Sunday night. Monday, of course, is the Derby, but also the Assiniboy Oaks for three-year-old fillies. And if you want a little more flavor, we are so very pleased to bring back to Manitoba and Assiniboia Downs. They're based out of here uh, during their stay after a four-year hiatus, the world-famous RCMP musical ride. There will be two shows available both Saturday and Sunday of this Festival of Racing weekend, and we are so thrilled to have that federal 
uh, iconic event here. I'm also thrilled to be mentioning in conjunction with sponsor support from QX 104 FM and Manitoba Liquor and Lotteries, the addition once again of a free country concert after the races on Sunday night as Alberta award-winning recording artist Aaron Prechette will take the stage out front Sunday night and uh, the way the weather is tracking, it's going to be an amazing experience. So ladies and gentlemen, I can sum it up in the simplest of forms. If you're going to do a staycation this weekend with four premier steak events, the musical ride, a country concert, the Manitoba Derby, do the downs. And before we move forward to the field, I got to tell you, there is one more twist, one more nugget of uh, gold on the table, and it could be a life changer for someone. Ladies and gentlemen, we have featured a very special bet at Assiniboia Downs from the start of the live race season back in May. It is a bet that asks you to pick the top five finishers in exact order in our last race of the day. And here's the kicker to win the jackpot. You must be the only one to be able to do it. So in other words, if two people correctly select the top five finishers in exact order, the jackpot pool carries over to the next race day. Well, ladies and gentlemen, nobody has been able to do that. Nobody's been able to make that unique bet and winning bet since the start of the season. And what does that mean? It means, ladies and gentlemen, that the carryover of money, or as we call it, the jackpot, has now reached over $260,000. And ladies and gentlemen, on Derby Day, Monday afternoon, we have created what we're calling a mandatory payout day. In other words, all of the money in the jackpot carryover will be paid out, including all the money bet on it that day, no matter how many people select the top five finishers in exact order. And we hope a lot of people do, and we hope a lot of them are locally based. The translation, a record-setting, massive amount of money to be won at Assiniboia Downs on Monday afternoon in the last race of the day. And ladies and gentlemen, both locally and from around the world, they are going to watch and wager on this race like never before. Uh, never before we're going to have this kind of spotlight or have we had this spotlight or focus on Assiniboia Downs specifically tied to this bet. We could be conservative, and that's not because of who's in that limestone in the building on Broadway, but we could be conservative and say it's going to be over $500,000 in that pool, but we think it could top very possibly well over a million dollars. And here's the other thing. You can bet and win it for 20 cents. Two dimes. Doesn't get you a lot in this day and age, but it might get you a million dollars Monday here at Assiniboia Downs, and that's true. The all-time record for wagering at Assiniboia Downs was set back in September of 1988 during a visit by the legendary jockey Bill Shoemaker when at Assiniboia Downs we wagered $713,756. Monday afternoon here at Assiniboia Downs, we believe we are going to rewrite the history books and top that number, and what a weekend we're going to have trying to do that. So let's uh, raise our glasses to history and let's go over a million on Monday afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And now, ladies and gentlemen, with sponsorship support from Manitoba Liquor and Lotteries, it is time to recognize the tradition that is the Manitoba Derby as that tradition continues Monday afternoon. We will again feature all of the pageantry, the prestige, the history that is Manitoba Derby Day at the Downs, from the popular annual Derby Day Fabulous Hats contest to the live on-site bugler, to a very special guest singing the national anthems Monday afternoon in the form of the Winnipeg Jets' own Stacey Natras. We'll of course add in for the families out there that afternoon family free fun events, pony rides, face painting, petting zoo, etc. Contest galore as well. So on that traditional note, uh, again you'll see in the cover the winner of the 2015 Manitoba Derby as we always like to recognize history specifically tied to this event here at Assiniboia Downs. And now it's time to introduce you to the huge field we're so proud to feature. The horses who will go to post Monday afternoon in the Manitoba Derby brought to you by Manitoba Liquors and Lotteries. So please uh, feel free to follow along in your press kits and on the television monitors. Ladies and gentlemen, we have assembled a wide open, talent laden field from home and far and wide to enter the gate on Monday and showcase their skills. And we begin in alphabetical order with Break the Silence. Break the Silence, quite possibly the first ever horse to race in the Manitoba Derby that hails from the state of Indiana. 
Break the Silence is not new to the winner's circle, having already been there to visit on three occasions and all in 2016. A versatile horse who has actually won on the grass or turf and also on dirt. He appeared to be tabbed as a sprinter early in his career, but once stretched out to a distance of ground, he has blossomed. And also, notably, his jockey is very familiar to Winnipeg and will be making his return to the track for the first time in many years. Rocco, the jocko Bowman, Bowen, is tabbed to be in the saddle. And here's a look at Break the Silence. Hey, Bud has no more to offer than it's Hoochie Poochie to the inside of Hard to Want as they turn into the home stretch. Break the Silence tries to fend off the favorite discreet officer and Break the Silence is offering plenty of resistance to discreet officer and it's Break the Silence turning away discreet officer at the 16th ball. Break the Silence strides away by four and it will be Break the Silence with a front running victory. Close for second. For those poker players in the crowd, we now move on to Inside Straight. A horse from afar was now familiar with the local oval at Assiniboia Downs, purchased in May at Belmont Park in New York. This three-year-old was sent here early to test a local prep race for the Manitoba Derby, the Harry Jeffrey Handicap, or stakes rather, utilizing an off-the-pace strategy in that race, Inside Straight, once beginning his rally, had his momentum interrupted a little bit briefly in the far term before continuing his quest for the wire, ultimately finishing third, beaten just a length in that race. Comes from the powerful tutelage of renowned trainer Robertino Diodoro. The connections will not make excuses for losses, but will rather regroup and run again, this time with higher expectations, and that's expectations of the winner's circle. One of two offerings from the Diodoro barn. Inside straight has also won three races in his brief career. He's already banked over $146,000 in earnings and is bred to easily handle the challenging distance of the Derby Monday afternoon. Here's a look at Inside Straight. Baker. The field moves into the stretch, and it's inside straight opening up. Inside straight now by four. Then Burbs Monarchy and Dagger Point with Tree Shaker, and on to Trenton. Inside straight now pouring it on here. Inside straight in front by ten lengths. A few anxious moments there at the start for inside straight, but no problems at the end. He won decisively. Dagger Point was second, then Tree Shaker and Burbs. We move on now to Media Mele. This Florida bred is the winningest horse in the entire Derby field, having paid a visit to the winner's circle on four occasions. A strong local hope owned by Manitoba Connections. Media Mele has the home court advantage, if you will, and has already raced on the Assiniboia Downs surface four times. The results, how about an impressive two wins, a second and a fourth. Even more impressive, both of those wins came in stakes races. A stocking roll just off the early speed saw him win the Manitoba Dancer Stakes in the slop, and then he immediately followed that victory up with a repeat in the Golden Boy Stakes, that time with more of a lead-pressing effort. He's carved out just over 60000 in earnings in 2016 and looks to add to that total on Monday afternoon. Here's Local Hope Media Melee. Heaver making a very strong move. Lift Me Up is the trailer. They went the half 46 and 2. The lead to Media Melee, Macho North fighting back on the inside. Heber trying to swoop them three wide. Down to these three with the 16th of a mile to go. Media Melee, Heber giving his, his all on the outside, but Media Melee will take the Golden Boy. Heber is second best. We continue along now to Power Driven. This is a lightly raced but very talented three-year-old who's traveled to, for such a short career with stops in Arkansas, multiple racetracks at the elite level in Kentucky and now Assiniboia Downs, sharply purchased out of the legendary Churchill Downs in mid-June. Power Driven was immediately sent to Assiniboia Downs with Manitoba Derby plans on the table. He will absolutely benefit from having a local start under his belt already and more importantly, absolutely benefit from the hands of Assiniboia Downs all-time leading trainer, Gary Danielson. And considering that Gary Danielson has won pretty much every major race that Assiniboia Downs has had to offer, the one that eludes him so far is the Manitoba Derby. 
If the strong closing second place finish in the Derby Prep Harry Jeffrey Stakes is any indication of how quickly Power Driven is acclimated to the local oval, watch out on Monday afternoon. Another horse in the Derby field who is also very well bred to handle the challenging distance of the race. Here's Power Driven. Off an oncoming Providence, who's second on the outside with a quarter mile to go. And Power Driven's not far behind either. Under the whip, third on the outside. Tracking the cat is fourth toward the rail. Racing for the eighth pole. Providence up for the lead. Dionysus back into second. But here comes Power Driven putting in a final bit on the outside. Providence has to fend off Power Driven, who keeps on closing. Power Driven outside of Providence. These two down to the wire together. Power Driven narrow lead. Providence fights on. Here's the finish. And Power Driven got there. Just up over Providence. We continue on now to primary factor. Well, they say things come in threes, and for the K5 stables, there could be no better way to live that saying that by winning the Manitoba Derby again for the third time. As we noted earlier, this horse was chosen by the late Philip Kivas as his 2016 Derby horse. And at this moment, all things are on track to try and accomplish that feat and get that highly coveted win. An exceptionally well-bred horse who will relish the mile and an eighth distance of the Derby. Primary factor has really grown to develop and the timing could not be any better. After stops in Kentucky and Florida, he found his way to Assiniboy Downs in the barn of former Assiniboy Downs leading trainer Shelley Brown. A learning experience second place finish over this surface then set the stage for back-to-back -back wins including a stunning wire-to-wire -wire win in the local prep race for the Derby, the Harry Jeffrey Stakes. The connections to this horse won the Derby previously with Plenty Chili and Northern Prospect as we mentioned. Whether on talent or divine intervention, Primary Factor has earned his shot to get the win Monday. Here's Primary Factor. Play right there. Three wide is Heber on the rail. Inside straight's going to be looking for room soon, as is Power Driven. Three quarters, 113 and three. Primary Factor still with the lead, but now getting room inside straight on the outside. Primary Factor at the 16th pole. Primary factor is going to get it done in the Harry Jeffrey. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we move on to Ruck. The morning line favorite in the race at odds of 2-1. to one. Ruck arrives as a somewhat rare Eastern Canada entry over the last number of years. With the intent on continuing west through other provincial derby races, Ruck is sent here for an all-business effort won't take the Manitoba Derby race lightly or the competition lightly. Hailing from the Canada-renowned training powerhouse of Reed Baker, Ruck was sent here strategically early to wisely get familiar with the surroundings and the ASD track surface. He has two wins to his career credit and clearly shows an ability to run a distance of ground. A recent effort in a $100,000 stake event at Woodbine saw Ruck finish eighth, but only beaten seven and a half lengths, and notably the third place finisher in that stakes race immediately came back to win. Ruck carries the bullseye on his back going into Monday's race. Here's a look at the Manitoba Derby favorite on paper, Ruck. Would Hideaway's burst up to take the lead, taken on in earnest by more data. On the inside, decisions, decisions. They turn as a trio. II captains running on down the center. Conquest cavalry between runners. Down the lane in front is more data within the center. Hollywood Hideaway, II captain, and Ruck. Ruck finishing the best. Ruck from last and has gone swamping on by. Ruck in front. II captain trying to go with Ruck. But from last to first, and Ruck by almost a length, three quarters of the wire. I I can. And ladies and gentlemen, we now move on to Solve. The other offering from trainer Robertino Diodoro, Solve may prove to be the horse flying just under the radar at odds of six to one. A well thought of three year old, Solve has primarily been campaigning on the tough Kentucky racing circuit, and his stock has been on the rise of late. After breaking his maiden with a win in Louisiana on the grass, he next tackled a gate swelling field of 12 horses in a distance test at legendary Keeneland Racecourse in Kentucky, and that test was a pass with honors. He was then off to Churchill Downs, home, of course, of the Kentucky Derby, to prove his versatility by just missing a victory by a nose in a race that was back on the dirt. You'll see this horse tracking the speed from well off the pace on Monday, looking to take advantage of the longest stretch drive in western Canada here at Assiniboia Downs, and you just may be seeing him in inhaling the field late. Here's a look at Solve. Solve starts a wide move. Magic 5 is next. 
Then Moontrack now angled doubt and Stormy Desire was last as they straightened. Three quarters on yielding turf, one minute 16 and one fifth seconds. Planet's led them a long way. Here's Sol's challenge now for Planet and these two dispute it past the 16th. Moontrack is staying on. Magic Five is fourth. The other's up the course. It's Solve and James Graham. Fifth run and Solve pulled away to win by a length and a half. Planet was second. Moontrack third. Magic And ladies and gentlemen, we conclude now with Wits Henny Penny, the final horse to preview for the Thoroughbred season's biggest race. Wits Henny Penny looks to play the role of long shot upsetter, but don't discount his chances by any means. From trainer Jerry Gornow's barn, annually one of the top stables at Assiniboia Downs, this horse seems to relish running longer distances. His recent form suggests the further they go, the better he gets, and the Manitoba Derby is, of course, our longest stakes race distance of the year. His last two efforts running far, the results, two wins. In five starts at ASD, he has never finished out of the top three, and back to trainer Jerry Gornow, he sent wit six, to post in last year's Manitoba Derby and lost a heartbreaking photo finish at the wire to end up second. And another big blue caboose just about shocked the world out here a few years ago at Big Odds. Bottom line is Gorno can get him ready for the big ones and we'll be looking to repeat that pattern again on Monday. Here's the final horse, Wits Henny Penny. Some pony falling back to 20 and a fleet in time getting into gear three quarters 113 and three John Q leaves the rail open wits Henny Penny has some room my story and I'm sticking to it falling back to third it's John Q Wits Henny Penny trying to get up and go by it's these two bobbing to the wire Wits Henny Penny's gonna take it John and ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. There's the preview on paper. There's the preview on the video. Monday, the real deal. Time for the real show. So ladies and gentlemen, that's your contestants for the Manitoba Derby on Monday afternoon. How about a round of acknowledgement for those who are here today and their horses. And ladies and gentlemen, now it's time to complete the official draw for post positions for that historical honour. We are very pleased to call on once again the Honourable Ron Schuler, Minister of Crown Services for Manitoba. And from our proud sponsor, Manitoba Liquor and Lotter Lotteries, I'd like to call on their CEO, Mr. John Stinson. Gentlemen. Slide by. Yeah. Okay, and we'll get one from you there. John. There it is. Just one on the right. Number seven. Oh, no, I lied. Number four. Number four is primary factor. Our Derby Bell Paxton, we're so happy to help assist us. We'll take a moment and lock and load primary factor in position. <laughs> Tribal council up here, yes, yeah. <laughs> Voting somebody off. And number six. Number six is the Eastern Invader Ruck. Number three is inside straight. There it is. John had mentioned number three being number three. There you go. There's your hot tip for the Monday afternoon event. <laughs> I got a number from you there, John. Oh, there we go. 
so excited about number three. Being I, I see that. Number, number one. Number one is solve. Lucky number seven, Local Hope Media Melee. Number five. Number five is Wits Henny Penny. Number two goes to power driven. And I guess this one's obvious. Let's, let's make sure. <laughs> Absolutely. A lot of gaming officials here. Number eight. Whoops. Number eight. Break the silence. Another number two. <laughs> and number eight at number eight. There you go. Number eight at number eight. There's your exactor, Quinella, et cetera, as recommended by John Stinson. <laughs> But ladies and gentlemen, thank you gentlemen. There's your field for Monday afternoon's Manitoba Derby brought to you by Manitoba Liquor and Lotteries. Have you ever thought of doing this for a living? <laughs> well, I, if you let us out, Absolutely. Well. Thank you. Thanks, And ladies and gentlemen, of course, now the field is set and ready to go for the starting gate to the media. Both myself and Sharon Gullius would be happy to uh, introduce you to any of the principals connected to our race. A reminder, we do not race this Friday evening. We go Saturday and Sunday night, parade to post at 7.15, Monday afternoon at 1.15. Now it's time to taste the offerings of our executive chef, Michael Keeler, and his team. And due to potential time commitments, we'll start at the top with the media tables, and then our staff will provide specific guidance to your table immediately after that. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you can join us any of the days this week and come out to the Festival of Racing here at Assiniboia Downs. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yes, you bet. That's a great idea. Oh, yeah. Let's let you guys back in there and get the entertainment going.